Hey now, morons and gearheads. Welcome back to another edition of Moron Money, where we provide you not financial advice. In no way is this financial advice, certainly not. But we try to give you uh, enough information that uh, can launch you into your own, doing your own research. And uh, you can come back here and call me an idiot, or you say, hey, Mike, that was a, that was a nice little tip you gave us. Uh, but these aren't tips, because it's not financial advice. Uh, anyways, we do this twice a week on patreon.com slash blind Mike. Uh, so you can find the Sunday and Thursday episodes there. Um, and then we kind of come here on Fridays to give you a little, uh, a, a little freebie, a little recap of the week. So uh, tell your friends, because boy, these views really stink so far. Uh, so make sure you, uh, if you, if you like what you see here, uh, pass it along to someone else who may like it. Um, so good news this week, folks. You know, I'm always talking about, we talk here about the stock market and cryptocurrency, but lately it's been a lot more crypto. Um, but I told the, the gearheads on Sunday that I would dip my toe back into uh, the stock market and check it out a little so I could give you guys some information. And uh, it turns out I am getting a little bullish on the stock market. I like what I saw. Uh, I mean, first of all, we saw, you know, I talked about, I warned about a crash. I was always, I was very nervous about that for a long time and still am to an extent. But right now, uh, I am bullish. I think eventually there may be a, a drastic crash in the stock market, particularly when uh, people realize the dollar is valueless, but that's for another day. Right now, the reason I'm bullish is a couple of reasons. We get our stimulus checks uh, possibly as soon as this weekend, it sounds like, uh, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but also there's a fourth vaccine out now. So you have Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and now uh, Novavax is in the mix. Um, there have been no horror stories about these vaccines yet. You know, uh, I don't have any idea what the effect will be long term, but as of now, we haven't seen anything uh, earth shattering that would suggest we're going to have to shut back down or anything. Um, so the news has been good news as far as Corona goes and plain, is sim plain and simple. Um, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to say that word on YouTube, am I? Nah, I'm, these aren't getting monetized. Who cares? <laughs> um, uh, so the weather is nice now. It's as easy as that. The weather's nice. You know, you can go out to dinner outside eat outside oh it's like we're living lives again uh, you see you know in, in california where they were you know petrified for a while movie theaters are opening back up now here in massachusetts it seems like things are almost kind of going back to normal restaurants are opening back up all that fun stuff uh so we may actually live our lives this summer which is incredibly bullish news um you know you saw you might have seen yesterday uh penn national which i talk about a lot is uh, opened in Illinois, and their stock price went up. And something this will kind of be a theme today that I'm warning you about a little bit with everything. Um, you see that Penn National price, and that might scare you, $130, wherever it is. Um, that might worry you, but look at it this way. <laughs> if they're at $130 and they're just getting started, you know, they're just opening up in Illinois, that's what, four or five states they're in now, maybe not even? Um, think of what that will be when gambling is legal in all 50 states and they kind of have a stranglehold. I do believe in the gambling space. Um, one of the things I got back into this week was Round Hill Sports Betting, um, which their largest holdings, it's an ETF, uh, gambling ETF. Their largest holdings are Penn National and DraftKings. Those are my two favorite, which is why I like Round Hill Sports Betting a lot. Their ticker code is BETZ if you want to check them out. Um, but you know, yeah. And, and that's a little, little cheaper, a little less risky, I guess. Uh, although I do think, you know, uh, I say what you want about Barstool sports. I, I truly believe that, um, they have such a head start on everyone else because of that Barstool sports brand that that's just naturally going to help them in the gambling space and give them something that no one else has. Um, so I made plenty of money on Penn national, but I think there's Plenty more money to be made out there. So look at the gambling space as that opens up. Cannabis, I talk about a lot. These, these uh, industries that are going to be uh, legalized, and you see these stocks at where they are now, think about when they're legal in all 50 states is all I'm saying. Um, but the other thing, I mean, even look at uh, the airline industry. Southwest has been doing very well of late, uh, and they've held on for a while. So look at Southwest. Um, look at the restaurant industry industry <laughs> things like uh 
you know, dining brands, chain restaurants, things like that. Even uh, Red Robin, which I'm not uh, totally kidding about that, actually. Um, so look at all those. See what you think. Because if, uh, if things start opening back up here, that's what I think is really going to boom. Alcohol, um, restaurants, uh, airlines, even maybe cruise ships eventually. Hotels, for sure. Um, so start looking into those. See if it's worth your while. Uh, but the other thing I'm uh, bullish on is nano dimension, which really has nothing to do with uh, the pandemic or anything. It's simply that uh, when I looked back into the stock market, nano dimension was one of those things. I hated, I dumped out of Robinhood and went all into crypto. And I hated getting rid of things like nano dimension, Afria, uh, Round Hill Sports Betting, Penn National. I did not like getting rid of things like that. Because I knew these are all going to take off eventually. I'm selling them now because I've made a good profit and I want to get out of Robin Hood. But I still, I still like these things. Now, I was lucky because I looked back into the stock market this week. And uh, it turns out things had, things had not gone well. Oh, all of a sudden, um, you know, not quite a crash, but definitely a big dip that people were kind of predicting for a while. And why is Nano Dimension back at $8? Didn't make any sense to me. So I did some Googling. So what's been going on here? And uh, there was no bad news other than, you know, stuff I had already known that I was not really worried about. Uh, the good news to me, and, you know, value this however you want, but my girl, Kathy Woods of ARK Investment, um, they've been very bullish on Nano Dimension for a while. They're always buying. Every time. Every time you see Nano Dimension in the news, ARK Investment's buying more. Um and Kathy Wood said, well, why is that? Because we look, one of the reasons is that we look at where uh, the defense is putting their money. Nano Dimension has a d defense contracts right now, which is a very good sign. That's buku bucks. Um, and in general, uh, I always believe Nano Dimension's uh, 3D, their 3D printing company, their Dragonfly technology, it makes it so that um, essentially the process to making prototypes, they take that from you know, a process that took weeks and months and condense it down into a process that takes days or hours, which would be huge for that space. So look at the nano dimension as well, and NDM. Um, and like I said, the things I have gotten back into in the stock market, and uh, you just dip my toe in. So I'm not, you know, losing the house on any of these. Uh, but maybe, you know, take a little bit of that stimulus check if, if that suits your fancy. And like I said, looking at Nano Dimension, looking at Afria, um, uh, Penn National and DraftKings. Uh, Cinedime is another one that I invest in. I don't know how confident I am in them. Uh, they're a streaming brand that uh, is trying to own, essentially, it seems like as many titles as they can, uh, which right now it's mostly independent films and things like that. But the way the world is going, the way the digital world is going, uh, that is a good industry to be in. It's a small cap company. Um, that if they get their mitts on the right titles, could be very valuable to someone like Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Um, so look at all of those. Also look into, you know, the AI and 5G space. I've talked about uh, Garmin before. I've talked about InterDigital. I've talked about Veritone. Um, and if you find, you know, look into AI, 3G, all these spaces that are going to be the future. And find one that you like and leave a comment below. Let me know what it is and we'll talk about it next time. Um, and the other thing I would say to look into, in addition to everything I've talked about, would be digital wallets. Um, PayPal obviously being the, the, you know, having a stranglehold on that market a little bit, especially with getting into crypto. But with the death of cash, the advancement of crypto, digital wallets is another one um, to be looking into. So look in all of those spaces. And uh, if you you know, have your, your eye on something that I've missed, uh, let me know. Let me know what it is in the comments. Or if you think, hey, one of those stocks that you talked about is uh, a load of baloney, Mike. You know, it's yesterday's tomatoes. Then let me know that as well. Put that in the comments below. And uh, then we'll move on to crypto, which there isn't a ton. It's mostly just price news. Um, like you've seen Cardano dip here, which doesn't really worry me yet. No, No price news really bothers me. The only reason price news is interesting me today uh, with Bitcoin is, yeah, Bitcoin went back up over 58,000 and dipped a little um, as, it, as it tends to do. A lot of people predicting a launch into a new all-time high. You hear numbers like uh, $60,000, $72,000 thrown out there. 
we shall see as far as that goes. I do expect when people start uh, cashing their stimulus checks, you're going to see a lot of $1,400 transfers going into Bitcoin. Um, and I'm not saying that's what you should do because this is in no way financial advice. It's for entertainment and uh, information. But um, yeah, $1,400, you'll see a lot of those going into Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know that that's unwise. I think maybe uh, it would be smart to diversify a little unless you're becoming a Bitcoin maximalist like I was for a little bit. And then, like I said, I said, you know what? I'm going to diversify a little. I like being in the stock market. And what I'm going to do with that is essentially uh, every time, you know, every time you get a paycheck, Every time you get paid, I do believe, and this is just my opinion, that you should put a little bit, a little bit maybe in, maybe into the stock market and definitely a little bit into crypto. That's how I'm doing it. And you can do it the reverse. You can do it all stock market, all crypto, however you want. But, um, and it might be only 50 bucks a week or, you know, 100 bucks a month or whatever, um, whatever you're comfortable with. It may be a lot more than that. It may be a lot less. But whatever you can, that adds up. So, for example, all I did this week was put $200 into the stock market and spread that over the uh, four or five stocks that I mentioned. Um, now, next month, maybe I do that again. Maybe I do a little more. Maybe I do a little less even, whatever. But that adds up over time. And you see this money that would otherwise just be sitting there in a bank uh, start to accumulate and add value as long as you've you know, looked into the right companies and done your research. Um, so think about doing that, especially as we get our stimulus checks. If you don't need it to pay your rent or your bills, um, then look at putting it into some smart places, I think is what you should do. But I, I digress. I was talking about Bitcoin here. Um, the, the interesting news with Bitcoin is more. Uh, ARW, a firm in Florida, is accepting payments in Bitcoin. Golden Sachs is in love with Bitcoin now. Um, we saw the oldest bank in America uh, get into Bitcoin uh, maybe a month ago, maybe two months. Um, well, now one of the oldest banks in Germany is getting into the crypto space. Now, you might say, Mike, why do I care? Why, why do you every week you tell me this, you know, these companies are getting into Bitcoin? Why do I give a turkey? Well, the reason is uh, because I'm just trying to warn you that the more you see, uh, you know, like I talked about with Penn National, you see this 58,000. That could be potentially, and I believe it will be, peanuts when you consider what the price will be when Amazon gets involved and Apple and Netflix, which has been rumored actually, uh, and all these other companies get involved. The number will be so much greater than 58,000. I was talking to someone, a family member this week, that's it, isn't it? Pretty much at the top, though. Didn't I? I missed the boat, didn't I? But when one Bitcoin is worth seven figures uh, or even six figures, that will seem like very silly talk, um, very illogical. Because a lot of people said that at 10,000 and 20,000 and 30,000. People said, didn't I? I, I missed the boat already. Uh, you know, how, how is it going to go any higher? But then you consider one and a half percent of the world is invested in Bitcoin right now, something like that. Um, so just take that number into account that there's a lot of room, a lot of room, uh, for Bitcoin to grow. And the further we get into it, and the other reason I tell you about these corporations and institutions buying in is because the further we get into that, these companies that run the world, the banks, insurance companies, uh, big tech, Amazon, eventually, <laughs> um, when these companies get into Bitcoin, uh, it's going to be less and less likely that the government does not That's people's other concern is that the government's going to step in and somehow uh, shut us down from buying Bitcoin. But the more institutions that get involved, because that's who really runs the country, um, the less likely that is to happen. So I think all good news for Bitcoin. Also, this is just kind of funny to follow on Twitter. Uh, if you want to follow Peter Schiff, I called him the Skip Bayless of Bitcoin this week. Uh, he's essentially just a contrarian at this point because uh, to, either for contrarian's sake or because he doesn't look like uh, he doesn't like how much of an idiot he looks like. Uh, Peter Schiff is a guy who you know really trashed Bitcoin back in the day and then has doubled down each and every time the price has gone up. And his Twitter account, he's a billionaire, by the way, 
Um, and but his Twitter account is solely dedicated to trashing Bitcoin. Uh, boy, does he hate it. And you know, there may be something to what he says, but so far, all I've seen out of him is uh, ah, it's hogwash, it's no good, there's no real facts to back it up. Um, well, his son, Spencer Schiff, had uh, he, he people in uh, the crypto space always celebrated Spencer Schiff because he stuck it to his dad by buying Bitcoin. Well, now he is 100% in Bitcoin, he sold his silver. Uh, and any any of his other uh, uh, assets, and he has bought into Bitcoin 100%. And it's just funny to follow along. I mean, you know, I don't know a lot about Spencer Schiff. Maybe one day I'll look like a genius, but more the reason I'm reporting is because I just think it's funny that uh, there's a guy on Twitter who's he's literally, go look at it. Go look at Peter Schiff. Right now he's tweeting about, uh, my son's an idiot. I may take away his inheritance. I may de-inherit him or whatever he calls it. Um, you know, just trashing his son. And I don't know if it's a tongue-in-cheek bit that the son is in on or if that simply buying Bitcoin has really caused a riff in the family. Uh, but this Peter Schiff is a true maniac who you should uh, yeah, give, give him a follow. He's entertaining on Twitter. And uh, the more you get into Bitcoin, the more entertaining he is because uh, he just looks sillier and sillier every time. Every time the price goes up, he's ranting and raving about how it's never going to go up again. Uh, and he's made to look like a fool each and every time. So uh, I believe that's about it as far as, uh, you know, we give you some better information on the Patreon. So you should go to patreon.com slash blind Mike if you want a little more uh, in-depth look into crypto and the stock market. Um, and there we will be back Sunday on the $5 tier for uh, another episode of More on Money. Tell your friends because, boy, these free episodes don't get many views. It's almost like I'm behind a paywall here, for God's sake. So tell your friends, tell someone you think uh, might like it, tweet it out, whatever you want to do. It all helps. Smash the like, as they say here on YouTube, leave a comment. Uh, all that helps the algorithm. So maybe more people will find more on money. And um, I think that's it until next time. Let's keep making money.